Welcome back. Donald Trump is doubling down on calling Democrats enemies from within. The former president first made those comments over the weekend on Fox News, and then he repeated them yesterday during a taped town hall with a network in front of an audience of all women voters. Fox News has not yet released any advanced clips of that town hall, but did put out some transcripts. The town hall set to air later this morning. At the same time, former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, who served in the Trump administration, says the American people should take Trump seriously when he suggested he would use the military against American citizens. The former SecDef made the comments on CNN. Do you fear that he would try to, to utilize the National Guard, the military uh, against U.S. citizens? Uh, yes, I do, of course, because I, I lived through that. And I saw over the summer of 2020 where uh, President Trump and those around him wanted to use the, the National Guard in various capacities in cities such as Chicago and, uh, and Portland and Seattle. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris is set to make an appearance on Fox News later today, her first ever, when she sits down with the ch channel's chief political correspondent, Brett Baer. The interview will be pre-taped in Philadelphia and then air this evening. Joining us now, MSNBC political analyst Brendan Buck. He was communications strategist and former aide to House Speakers Ryan and Boehner. Brendan, good to see you. Um, let's start with, with Donald Trump. A lot has been made the last couple of days about his sort of bizarre dancing um, the other night on stage. And then yesterday, a pretty nonsensical interview at the Economic Club of Chicago, where he was pressed on whether he would, uh, you know, certify, admit to a defeat, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't answer. He also couldn't answer basic things about his economic policy. He, it was sort of a mess. Um, but there's also perhaps just as serious, if not more, this darker rhetoric and these threats. And now we have a secretary of defense saying we should take him seriously. Yeah. Well, I think the, the difficult thing to sort of swallow here is for the last three or four weeks, he's gotten more and more attention for saying darker and darker and sort of crazier things. And he's paid really no price for it. Mm. And we are now into another situation that's starting to feel very eerily similar. And I think we've talked about this before. We're now back to where we're just sort of following around whatever Donald Trump said and did. And there's an argument that that is bad for Donald Trump. More sort of Trump can be bad for him, although we're not seeing that in the polls. But I think the bigger problem for the Harris campaign is what do you do with this? People have heard him talk about things like this for many years. One, does it move anybody still? But also, if you're the Harris campaign, you need to break through. You need to not allow Donald Trump to be driving what we talk about every day. She was at her best. How does she do that? I, I, that? That's the challenge. She was at her best, obviously, when she rolled out. She had this great convention. She was setting the tone of the campaign. At this point, it's very hard to see how she jumps back in and is, is, um, is setting the tone. I thought there was going to be another debate because I thought Donald Trump was going to be down significantly enough that he needed one. Now denying her another debate is a big problem for her because she, where does she jump in that she is able to wrestle this way that no one, no one has really been able to wrestle away the spotlight from Donald Trump other than Kamala Harris for a little while, but it feels like that's gone. It's now. a great point. She's been winning the big moments, her rollout, the convention, and then that debate. And she's gotten a burst. But that burst keeps dissipating, and she doesn't have necessarily another big moment coming, at least not a schedule. So I imagine that's what they're trying to sit around. What can we do? Who can we? What kind of endorsement can we roll out? What are the big things that we can do at this moment? I think they're doing a lot of the right blocking and tackling things and talking to the right voters. I just worry that if we are spending the next three weeks allowing Donald Trump to dictate what issues we're talking about, that is an advantage for him. And she's certainly doing more and more media appearances. She's getting in front of more voters. Her campaign schedule is also picked up. Today, Fox News, uh, first time ever doing it. Um, Give us your, your thoughts. You know, what is the risk reward here for her? Yeah, I think you, you were talking earlier with, with Ken Thomas about those little slivers of votes that, that she needs to get. And some of those are those sort of soft Republicans who don't like Trump, but have been uh, hammered with ads showing her as a progressive, you know, out of touch San Francisco liberal. And she needs to, to communicate to those people that, no, hey, look, that's not who I am. That's not what. And they've been trying to do that over and over again. Her, her convention speech was all about, you know, uh, she's going to be tough on the border. She owns a gun. All those kinds of things. We're trying to signal I'm not this, this uh, out of touch progressive that you need to be worried about. I'm a safe vote. And I think that's what she's trying to do here with Fox News. Um, but one thing we also wanted to make sure we, we talked to you about since your experience with House speakers is Mike Johnson, oh. Republican speaker, has he has already said 
that he and members of his party will only certify the results of this coming election if they think it's fair, which is we can leave wide open to yeah. interpretation as to what that means. Talk to us about the pressures he's going to be under yeah. uh, if Donald Trump loses. Um, you know, will do you, and do you think he would certify a Kamala Harris victory? Yeah, uh, this is the scenario where, where Donald Trump loses and the House is still held by Republicans. And Mike Johnson is trying to be, remain speaker. And I think we need to look back at what happened to Kevin McCarthy, who it took him several days and several rounds of voting to get the necessary votes to be speaker. I'd like people to imagine the scenario where Mike Johnson now has to ask those same people what they would like, to, what they need from him to vote for him for speaker. The speaker vote happens on January 3rd. You uh, certify the election on January 6th. It's not hard to imagine that Mike Johnson is it's going to say, tell a lot of those hardline conservatives, I'm not going to bring up a certification vote. I'm not going to allow that to happen if Donald Trump is, is protesting the outcome of the election. We may not have a Speaker of the House by January 6th. It's very likely that if Republicans maintain the House in that scenario, it's a very small majority. They have two or three seats. If you have four or five uh, Republicans who say, I'm not going to vote for Mike Johnson, I'm not going to vote for anybody who says they're going to certify the election, we could end up in, uh, I hate to use this uh, term, a constitutional crisis where there is nobody overseeing the House at a time when we need to certify the results of the yeah, election. Yeah, I, I agree. It can't be overstated. What we saw on January 6th, four years ago, we had never been there before, but we may be barreling towards another sort of unthinkable uh, political moment uh, in the weeks ahead. MSNBC political analyst Brendan Buck. Brendan, thank you so much. Really good stuff this morning. We will talk to you again real soon.